Hey guys, welcome to episode six of Playthrough with the Designer. Um, today we've got Jivenator, Jivesinator, Jives, John, bunch of names. John, how's it going, buddy? Good. Cool. Um, we're gonna have a rip around Iran more. This was the course that um, Jives made for the 2021 CC contest. Um, I remember it well now. We, this is our second take, and I'd forgotten I'd played this course. Um, but when I saw all the drunk people at the uh, pub, uh, that reminded me. <laughs> and then, uh, and then actually the grass too, to be honest, really, really did a lot. Um, this is your kind of, yeah. your members links course is what I remember it as. Yeah. It's, so. it's the one that, are, that everyone knows as the, as the course that got one, uh, grass planted over and over and over again. Yeah. Um, and it has the Gaelic football pitch that everybody thinks is a, uh, rugby pitch. Yes. But if we were thinking for a second, it's in Ireland. That's that's Gaelic football territory. But yeah, some of your purple cards here, they're a little bit park tata skew. Yeah, I, I like to do that sometimes, right? Just like, it's sort of like, would it be human nature to just park perfectly next to each other when there's no parking lines uh, on the surfaces in game? Hmm. No, they're just, they're just going to like, I mainly do it for myself to make myself laugh and to make others laugh if they look there. Yeah, that's cool. Um, and we I asked these questions are as ones I've already asked you before, but how long have you been designing? Uh, mid TGC one is when I started. And this is the fourth iteration of the game for people who aren't familiar. So that's a long damn time. Yes, it was. I I got the first game. Uh, not immediately when it came out, but I want to say about nine to twelve months after. So uh, it came out in twenty fourteen. I picked it up in twenty fifteen. Wow. I've been designing for like six, seven years on yeah. this series. That's yeah, seven years now. Wow. So you've been you're one of the OGs, I guess, right? Sort of. Not as not as old time as some of the other ones. True, but you around long enough. Like I don't yeah. even. I've never saw the original TGC or two actually. Twenty nineteen is when I showed up. All right. Um, for those watching, uh, we've been having technical issues like crazy. So we think we're in the same group. We were trying to do it through Discord screen share. No, not happening. Um, so hopefully we're gonna be able to at least. Well, hopefully Jobs will at least be able to see what I'm up to. Um, because that's the important part. But. Just looking at the first hole here, I mean, we see that grass everywhere. What was the inspiration for this course? Okay, so the um, the uh, two main inspirations for like the uh, uh, visual side of it was definitely uh, Karn and Trilly, which those are two of the uh, more wild uh, Irish Lynx courses. Um, uh, oh. Lynx courses sort of like have a different direction that they usually go, uh, often uh, dependent on like where they are on the British Isles or right. if they're not on the British Isles or whatever the hell they are. Mm -hmm. um, uh, traditional like uh, Scottish Lynx is like where the idea began, right? That's okay. it's where like home of golf, St. Andrews is. Um, English Lynx are usually a little bit more subdued than that. And Irish Lynx are just insanity. Right. There's a lot more uh, land movement, especially along the uh, uh, west coast of Ireland, which is where most of the courses are. Uh, and that allows for pretty much what you would see on like Oranmore here. There's mm -hmm. a lot of large hills. Yeah. And... Uh, I can see you now. So uh, it looks like we're in the same group. You're, you're, you're... I'll just have to. I'll just have to add you whenever the game allows. I'll check one more time and then I'll play. Okay. I, I see you with your old Tom Morris outfit there. A um, couple things before I get hate mail. We know that Ireland is not a part of the British Isles. That's Most not. That's not what Jives was talking about. Um, they're not. No, they're not a part politically. They're a part geographically. Well, technically, Great Britain is not part of Ireland, actually. United Kingdom, Northern Ireland is, but it's not part of Great Britain. It's fun. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is you're going to see Jives has his difficulty levels pretty low. Um, he's having controller issues today. So 
So the technical um, aspect of this is going fantastically well. Uh, he's going to give this a rip with mouse and keyboard, which he's never done before. So uh, he wanted to break 100. Oh, I'll be fine. I, I have tempo off. I'll be fine. Oh, he's going the Charlie route. Okay. I usually go tempo off from most like non-serious rounds. Nah, so. makes sense. All right. Well, I mean, I, I my back would be killing if I was standing over the ball this long, personally. But <laughs> I'd be very bored if I was. Yeah. This I'm... is this is like this is like whenever I would have like a, a tea time for a tournament and I would show up fifteen minutes early and just get to know the get to know the person I'm playing with and then wait for the kids ahead of me to hit four shots that don't right. even get to the green. But I mean, yeah, I, junior I, golf was fun. Yeah, well, yeah, I I did enough of it myself. Uh, I just mean stand like he's been standing in the address position for about five minutes now. Um, mm -hmm. This is Sergio to the newest extreme possible. There he goes. All right, we're off. Opening par four that isn't a driver hole unless you got the wind helping. I imagine. Yeah. Uh, the um. The idea for that is like you most, uh, uh, especially older courses, but plenty of courses uh, tend to have like the first or uh, first hole, definitely maybe first couple of holes as more of like breather holes. Mm -hmm. So this is pretty wide, not a lot of uh, uh, issues you will come across unless you just um, completely miss uh, on the uh, direction and everything. Can you see that I've hit or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Just, just wanting to make sure. I tried to run, to land it short and run it on, and I guess I just janked it a bit. You took the pin out? Or is that just HB being silly? That's HB being silly. All right. I'm way better Chip. off. Way better off chipping than putting. Missed the green on purpose, so I wouldn't have to putt. The greens are 135. Yep. All right. What's what's up with that? What are, what was the thinking behind having the greens just slightly faster than rough? Yeah. So you know the um, the uh, video that I uh, that I was talking about, the one with um, playthrough of Karn. Yeah, I'll I'll put that in the description. By the way. How do I change clubs? <laughs> oh, it's Q. Q button. No, Q's another designer that jives today. <laughs> oh, I earned that one. Uh, a lot of the um, and the idea for the overall playability for this, but specifically the green speeds, I watched good five, ten hours of... Um, just people playing various links courses, especially the uh, reference courses I used. Mm -hmm. Usually they would run fairly slowly. And I, there was one particular putt where like it, it runs in like the, it's a longer putt. It runs in uh, really fast because the ball oh. has to get there. But then as soon as it gets to the pin, it just slows down so quickly. Yeah. And that's sort of what I wanted to emulate where like, uh, you have to pay a lot more attention to like uh, how the speed will affect the line of the putt instead of just necessarily where the break is. And and part of that too is links courses tend to be slow anyways, or course slow greens because of the wind, right? Mm -hmm. If they speed them up to North American speeds, the ball doesn't stay. Kind of like yeah, my and, my shot here. Yeah, I mean older uh -oh. courses in like in like. Uh, uh, the Americas and continental Europe as well. They are they were more designed to play lower speeds as well because faster speeds are sort of a newer thing for for uh, real life design. Yeah, that's true. Like winged foot or Marion would not play well if brought up to like the, the speeds that most other um, uh, tour events play at unless you're just playing the US Open there where the USGA just doesn't care. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's and 
it, and there has been a there's been kind of two races in golf lately one is to make the course as long as possible and the other is to make the greens as fast as possible and i did neither of those with this course correct <laughs> this is 6600 and this is maxed out for tournament the original published was 6450 wow and yet it still plays well yeah sort of like the opposite of uh of a Digos that you did you did the playthrough with Matt on Digos. Yes, yeah. <laughs> that was a bit of a big boy course. <laughs> um yeah. so yeah, this I mean this does have the look of the kind of course that you would see in the local Irish town that the guys go out and play. It's it's not fancy, but it's it's really um cool it's how subtly there's things added to it. Um the undulations and stuff, I just fell for it here. I didn't go far enough left. Yeah. That's what I tried to do, but I didn't read the wind very well. A lot of these uh, a lot of these holes are like you should aim more towards one side of the fairway or the other based on the um uh, bounces you would get. Yeah, and the wind didn't take that one at all. Oh, it'll get there still. It'll oh. get forward. A little ground game here. It's like we're playing a Lynx course or something. <laughs> That'll actually be a really good shot from there. I, I'll, I'll say I meant to do it, but that was the old hit and hope. Yeah, this originally was a par 5 that I bumped it up to par 4 because flat players need pain. Right. And, well, and, and flat players never complain about anything. <laughs> so it's it's not a long par four either with especially with it being downwind or, or downhill i mean it plays a little longer because of how the uh the green runs uh front to back so yeah. it's not as easy to keep it around the pin as you would expect oh you bugger which makes sense right that's that's a classic Lynx thing to have the ball just run Mm -hmm. You're not throwing yeah. darts in it at greens. Yeah, and these greens are very, very small. So mm -hmm. that's that's like something that I I was adamant we had to make sure that we would talk about at, at least. I I, I know I uh, wanted to bring it up. Mm -hmm. The scaling is really, really small time on this course. So a lot of small greens, small fairways, small pretty much everything. Which was a conscious choice. Yes. Okay. And that's something that... It makes a lot of sense for this style, of course. And a lot of the uh, design choices I make are made in reference to like what would fit this style of course okay instead of like what would fit this game right and i fucked up uh oh so <laughs> d does that go back does that go back again to um oh you stuck it right there does that go back to the research that you did that um that's that this is kind of how the course should have been based on what you saw in those it's, videos it's not the easiest to tell um i figured that it would probably make a lot of sense uh especially like oh, the two courses that i uh that i most emulated uh Karn and Trilly, they were very like lower budget sort of like uh Karn, in fact didn't have like any budget it was legitimately a community effort when it was built um, and they wouldn't have the budget or the motivation uh, in the case of where the course was to um, uh, use like bulldozers or even like anything more than just like sh uh, hand shovels mm -hmm. so a lot of this is meant to be like this is what the land would look like, and this is what golf holes uh, laid atop the land would look like. Okay. Which, again, pretty typical. Like, that's an old school links for sure. Uh -huh. um, there's the land. Okay, let's put some holes on here, which I love. I love that style. I don't like hugely manufactured courses. 
Um, so this this here, we've got some water to play with. We do have uh, a coastline. If you, if you put it 80 yards left, then yes. Well, like, never say never. <laughs> Not in this game. Uh, I very rarely use water as like an actual hazard. I actually don't think I've done that at all in 2K21. Hmm. Is there a reason for that? Because uh, I think land plays more interesting than water. Okay. Like it's it's a very binary choice. Uh, like when you're having to deal with a shot that goes in water, either it goes in and you have to take a stroke out, and you have to um. Uh, play from wherever your drop is or you miss it and you're just fine right that uh, this is more geared toward like in game because there's it's a little bit more complicated in real life if you miss somewhere that's close to water but whenever you are like missing somewhere that's like heavy rough or just uneven uh, footing or a bunker somewhere that is a lot more interesting to me Okay, and I know, like, I played Shamblin' Shabaroon a couple times. I played it this afternoon, just to remind myself. Um, it seems like you like to use undulations a lot to um, create the difficulty or the shot values or for that to be more of the feature. Mm -hmm. Definitely the case for Shabaroon and Orinmore, which are the most ground gamey of my courses. Kuz is a little similar, but it's more on the macro side, where it's like larger land movements. Okay. Kuz, yeah, I've played Kuz. Yeah, that's that's the one that was my World Cup from back then. Right. And it's the one that all of my designer friends still are not happy that I didn't plant very well. <laughs> <laughs> well, you planted the hell out of this place. Well, with one grass at least. Comparatively. <laughs> <laughs> I get the sense you were just going more for the authentic to the land feel here rather than dazzled in the game. Yeah, and I said it very briefly before uh, before recording started. The uh, the uh, idea that uh, uh, that the planting scheme came from is very very hard to pull off well in the game. Mm -hmm. And. That stems from a lot of different reasons. Uh, probably the most important one is that uh, grass just doesn't render well in this game. So, like, all the grasses that you see, like, on the far hills, on, like, on the other side of the town, mm -hmm. those are, like, 15 feet tall because oh. there's no way they would render any further than that. And then the grasses render differently depending on your system, too, right? Yeah, yeah. They render it slightly different uh, distances yeah. uh, as far as i know in uh, the different consoles and then even you if you're trying to play on switch charlie trying to look at planting schemes <laughs> oh he has an xbox now he He's does fine. have an xbox now um but even like what graphics card you have will make a difference i've i've seen mm -hmm. oh i remember this beauty all right tell me about this uh drivable four Oh, this this was the first hole I made on this on this plot, and it plays a little bit longer uh, when you're on the tournament tees. Um, something that I do that is probably not the best idea to do, but I really like it anyway. Sometimes I just I just make a hole that I think is something that would be a challenge for me and something that would be hilarious for me to make, and I just do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I did here. I okay. figured people are complaining enough about 240 plus yard par threes on tour. Let's make a 240 yard par four and see if people can complain about it. I got to be honest. When I first played this, I thought it was a par four and I was like, God, that's harsh. Or sorry, or I thought three. it was a par three. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, that's a harsh par three. Yeah, I, I've had, I had plenty of people who thought it was a three at first. In the chat, my chat told me, uh, it's, it's actually a four, Wayne. Uh, I was like, oh, okay. I'll join you. <laughs> uh, yes, you know, I'll, have, I'll just have a really long, a really long putt. Yeah, I think I'm going to like being able to splash this down here and stop it. Which, I mean, it, it's, it's unfortunate I can do this. I'm going to because the game allows me, but 
this should be an absolutely miserable shot I have left because I should have to kind of like do a pitch and run mm -hmm. um, where I'm going to be able to just fly it right over. You know what? No, I'm going to play it correctly. I'm going to play yeah, it. This, this would be a very difficult shot yeah. in real life. I'm going to play it the way that you would play it in real life. Yeah. A, a lot of the um, uh, reference videos as well, and like this, that part of the world, uh, doesn't always like have the same sort oh. of, like, ethos around golf. Uh, like plenty of people in the states or, and in like other places in the world, um, even if it's more subconsciously or anything, or just like, uh, just like their idea of enjoyment can sometimes be tied to score too much. And that's mm -hmm. something that I think is very true for the playing community of this game as well. Mm -hmm. Like you're like, this course has three and a half stars and Barton Hills, which is one of the hardest courses in the game and is fairly well made for how ungodly hard it is. That has three stars. Yeah. <laughs> ben is very proud of that. Having three stars, by the way. <laughs> Yeah, people need to get over the score. It's it's more like how did the course play, and you know if if it's punishing good shots, then okay, that's maybe not good. But oh, look at the! I mean, those are two fine efforts from up there by us. Yeah, that is. Neither of those would be easy shots in real life. No, God help us if they cut the greens. Yeah, that would not have stuck anywhere close to the hole if it was 163s. It did play 163 one day on the tour. And I had to specifically make a T set to make that work. And it, there, I'm guessing a certain pin set would have had to have been used because I'm sure there's. I, mean, I meant to say pin set, okay. but we did also do team manipulation for this course. Oh, that's got to come back. Get a kick? No, you'll get nothing and like it. Yeah. Sort of like the idea of scaling on this on this course. Mm -hmm. Like you see how thin that that fairway pinches in. Yeah. And a lot of these fairways are very thin. Yeah, I, I remember and that. <laughs> you you probably remember it by force now that you're playing it again yeah yeah but it, these these are like everything is uh is like meant to be uh tighter in and even like the uh choices you make like which side of the fairway to go uh, off of it's there's not as much width to that as there would be in a normal uh, in a normal course it's a mm -hmm. good amount wider i wonder if that like sorry go ahead because like there are still plenty of holes here where like the decision is like one tier of the fairway or another but it's a whole lot different when the fairway overall is 20 yards wide instead of 30 yards that makes sense um i just was thinking that three and a half stars thing i wonder how much of that is that this is a shorter course tighter course not you know the water everywhere and waterfalls and all the visually you know spectacular stuff that a lot of casual players like i mean there's there's still like a ton of the uh, uh, the uh, big name designers uh courses that get uh, really high play counts and really high um Ooh. as star ratings what we like to say whenever we talk about stuff like that is that it simply does not matter when it pertains to quality of course. Yeah. You can you can have a um course that would be graded out as not approved or uh in the approved uh, section mm -hmm. that can get like 10 15,000 plays if it gets into the right societies and such. And it will get a massive the star ratings as well and then there are other courses that just don't get the same traction because it doesn't get as much in game love that mm -hmm. are uh, that are more skillfully made with the designer than uh, than uh, 
similar courses or other courses that get uh, uh, that get like not as much love basically yeah I, I don't even i don't rate courses just because i don't it, either it's pointless um no actually i remember i i rated barton hills one star to help out ben <laughs> <laughs> oh ben oh this little this little devil mm, little post stamp action here isn't it sort of yeah same like idea oh for god's sake well, when I see it on my screen, I'm guessing this isn't going to be a great shot. There's some some lag of some kind. No, I was oh. I was getting unhappy that the that the game. Uh, uh, I'm not used to mouse and keyboard controls, so I right. was just adding loft when I didn't want it, uh, and it didn't matter anyway because it was a bad shot because I overread the wind. It's not usually an issue. Usually, uh, you underread it. Oh, we flushed that. Now, have we picked the right bat? It's all over it. And it's deep. Too much, too much D-loft. Definitely got quite the chipping area front short of this with the false front there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they I sometimes make like par threes like that where the idea can sometimes be like if you have if you don't think you can pin hunt it's just fine to just send it to the middle of the green. Mm -hmm. This isn't even the this isn't even the uh, par three that like exemplifies this the most. There's one later on, and I guess four is like that as well. The uh, one with the massive hill in front. Yeah. Good putt. Thanks. So it is kind of your thinking when designing that you're going to give the player a safe area? And sometimes, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, it's it's a, a real-life GCA thing to, like, if, if there's a difficult um, uh, pin to get, there usually will be a bailout option, and... If there isn't one, it's either a fantastic hole, like 16 at Cypress Point, or it's a terrible hole. Right. Yeah, so stuff like that, where, like, it's something that happens a lot uh, in real life. You have to know when to um, break rules and such. Yeah, and so that that's kind of the whole, well, you know, this, this style or this element or this design feature is okay because it exists at this place. And you're like, well, yeah, it, but that's the only place it exists, and it makes sense because of... Yeah. Like, that's something I like to, like, point out, especially whenever, uh, whenever, uh, sort of specialty holes. Like, this is, this is a hole that it, it doesn't work because of, like, uh, because of the underlying idea. It works because of how I put it together. Mm-hmm. Because uh, if you tried this, if you tried this style of hole, uh, you'll probably see it more with the um, with your own shot. And you uh, execute it wrong. It's it's a god awful hole, and there are plenty of uh, of uh, players who would look at this and get the wrong sort of bounces and probably say the same thing. And in some ways, it could be justified, honestly, because. It's always something like there are very few holes where every single part of it is perfect. And I don't uh -oh. think this hole or this course is anywhere close to that. Yeah. I don't think anything here is perfect. And I, 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 you're, you're going to be sent all the way down because you missed uh, the fairway or you um, yeah. uh, didn't leave yourself a good opportunity. Oh no, I, oh, no, I hit that. Stay up. Which brings up an interesting conversation, because you mentioned water being binary. Mm -hmm. um, that shot was kind of binary, too. It was either on the green or halfway down the fairway. Sort of. I mean, this is another green, like, you want to put it in the center of the green if you fuck up. Right. Um, And... It, 
whenever I say like uh, a choice like that is a certain way, that doesn't mean that I'll never have a hole that that tells you to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, I do th I did that a lot and probably too much on Brentwood, where there were a lot of holes that are like you either hit this shot well or you don't, and you have to um, put a good short game shot up to get a par. Right. And there are there's a place for that. Uh, there's a place for like really penalizing holes. Mm -hmm. That's the entire reason why uh, penal holes are like part of golf course strategy. And that doesn't mean that it's like always a good thing. Like you're not going to you're not going to look at like every single penal hole and say that's well done because difficulty is not the same thing as like a well put together thought and strategy for a golf hole. Right. That makes sense. I think I did the exact same thing the other time, the first time I played it, where I hit it in the rough and then I don't know if I came up short or not. I don't remember. But mm -hmm. um, I, would, I, I went three clubs up there and that wasn't even close. Yeah. Another like really gimmicky sort of hole I have is three at Coos Golf Grounds. That's the one with two greens on it. With the double green complex, yeah, uh, sort of like my idea as a whole for like doing a hole like that, where where a certain idea is is just like really unconventional. I have to make it work, or else it's not worth doing. Okay. So something like this, um, I had to make sure that like all the uh, playability and such and everything made sense, or I wouldn't do that. Like, there's a reason why I left it as such a penalizing hole if you uh, miss your shots. Mm -hmm. It's like 380 yards on the on the card, and it plays a little longer because it's uphill. But, right. like, hitting a wood in this game, that'll still give you, like, an 8 or 9 iron, and those spin really uh, fast in this game. Mm -hmm. So, in that case, making that, it... That hole's, yeah, that hole's as difficult as you make it. Okay. And I missed the fairway, I think. Yeah. Mm, just barely. All right. So, yeah, this is not what we call a wide fairway. Mm -hmm. I mean, this I've, is one I probably should have done better on because I think the fairway makes it play a little bit too far off the edge, but it's, it's for. Uh, a really hard hole on the on the harder course. So. Mm -hmm. And I'm guessing the idea of no second cut of rough or no first whatever the hell semi rough is, um, that that goes again with the feel of the place, right? That they wouldn't be putting that much much maintenance into having three different grass heights. Uh, yes and no, and I'd actually I think that's a pretty interesting thing to go into for a few minutes. So okay. not necessarily like as the uh, game plays where like something like this uh, would give me a really penalizing lie. Um, but there would usually be like, oh, almost. That's a really good shot uh, from there still. Oof. But you're not going to get like the uh, tournament look from like, from like a, a course on the PGA Tour that has like manicured grass and like a really thin uh, band of first cut around the fairway. Right. You're not going to have that sort of like convention there. Um, I made the uh, texture choices specifically so that they would all like look as close to each other as possible. So it looks like just one different kind of grass uh, or one kind of grass for every cut. Okay. So they sort of blend together. I I think you talked a little bit about doing that for tour as well, where he had like, oh, I don't know if he talked about oh, it tour. as okay. much in this in this in the showcase. He definitely talked about that while making the course. Right. Okay. Yeah, I got I got wrapped up in Q's ex, um, description of how he designs it. I yeah, I he may have said that and I may have missed it because I was fascinated by how um kind of uninhibited his design is. Whoa, make a putt, why don't you? 
That's a good mouse and keyboard putt. Yeah. I wasn't letting you have that hole. <laughs> good putt. I don't think we're supposed to both make birdie on that hole, are we? That was one of the yeah. more difficult ones. Yeah, but if it was like strictly a playability thing of, of like how would how would a choice like that, like making it all look like the same cut of grass uh, be the most realistic, the most true to life, that would probably all be light rough instead. Because mm -hmm. they at, at least uh, at least uh, Karn and Trilly, which are like those are the ones that inform most of the like actual on course decisions. All of those have like really uh, uh, not very tall cuts of grass. Certainly nothing that would play like U.S. Open rough that the heavy rough can play like in this game. Yeah. So again, we've got water here that probably isn't really in play. It's more just kind of there because it's a lynx and we're by the ocean. Yeah, and you have to make it like you you would have to make it in play to do much of anything about right. it. Right. How are you ripping it past me every hole? Probably oh, have there. a longer driver. No, I mean, I have the longest one. Maybe you got some mouse and keyboard hat going on, I think. You literally hit that one further than me. This first time. Yeah, that's that's why I don't play mouse and keyboard on tour. It's it's to it's to hold back my true power. <laughs> I'd be winning on plat every week if I played on mouse and keyboard. There you go. You play plat, right? Yes, I do. Oh, boy. Were you on Elite at some point this year? I feel like we were on the same tour for a little bit. I was last season. Okay. I had the stretch of time where I could not play the game as much, and so I just couldn't keep up with plat scoring. It also didn't help that my controller was pretty shoddy around that time oh yeah in my intro i have uh like my stream intro <laughs> i have a I, I think i missed a two or three foot putt because the controller just basically said no yeah sometimes i would have like i would have like glitch swings where it would give me like a 70 percent very slow for literally no reason hmm that that's gonna work well on plat yeah <laughs> so i had to find a new controller and then I had to find three more because they kept breaking. Oh. That was fun. I bet. But I eventually uh, uh, got through that, and now I'm back on plat. Although I do have three demo marks right now. Mm, I think I have two on Elite. So we're both struggling a little bit. Ah, here we go. This is the postage stamp with the bunker on the right there. There's very much like eight at Trune, I think. What the whole I'm thinking there of? There are, I mean, eight at Trune is the classical postage stamp, yeah, but there are plenty of bunkers around that hole. Yeah, this one just has the one. Stop, stop. Oh, I didn't think I need to spin it. Oh, well, I can chip better, but that's fine. This course, yeah, you, there you go. would definitely play to the center of the green. Yeah. This course in a heavy wind would get your attention, that's for sure. Yeah, it played on it played on very high twice on tour. And they still shot stupid under, I bet. Yeah. They did. Um, I missed a chip. What's going on here? No, a putt like a putt like this, like what I have right now, that it it just doesn't really happen very much on like one sixty threes or up. There's mm -hmm. so much break I have to put into it, or so much aim I have to put into it, and I have to be very very conscious about the speed. Oh, I just missed it. Oh yeah, just around the a little bit too high. Yeah, that's it's it's certainly like a different uh 
playability uh, from what most people would have as normal on this game. Because mm -hmm. there just aren't very many greens that go like under 150s. No. No, there aren't. I think a lot, I mean, I don't usually like them. Um, on a Lynx, I understand it. It makes total sense to me on a Lynx. I actually, it bothers me when they're really fast on a Lynx because they shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. as a, but as a rule, I don't genuine, generally prefer them. Um, yeah, plenty of my courses I like. I like design for 163 to be like the max speed that they should play on. That's what the case was for um, Chaveron and Coos. Mm -hmm. This one I said no above 144s on the original <laughs> publish. And it, it, took, it took making a customized pin set and, uh, and plenty of testing between myself and Q to make sure that 163s could work for a uh, tournament. Is that just because people were going to be too upset playing slow greens all four days, or? I mean, Q wanted a day on 163s. Oh, so we just blame or... Q then. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it, it... While I was playing this course, like playtesting for, for the contest that it was in, I thought it would play worse on the higher speeds. It doesn't play horribly. Like I thought it would be unplayable on 187s. Right. Uh, it was vaguely playable on 187s, and 163s were like successful enough. Like you wouldn't put it off the green if you missed on like six holes, six out of eighteen holes. So I figured it would be worth it to try to to do that, and it worked well enough that we did it. Hmm, cool. It it is amazing how many courses you'll play that the greens are a bit on the slower side, and you're like, "Oh, what eighty sevens? You wouldn't be able to play this." But then you play, it and you're like, "No, you can." Yeah. And then you. Uh, do... it, I... Side note: One of my favorite uh, sort of things to do whenever, like, whenever like, uh, me and a designer friend are bored, we sometimes just pull up East Lake and play it on one eighty sevens because oh, it boy. is legitimately unplayable. Yeah. Yeah, this one, this one is one of my um, favorite ones for how playability came together for it. All right, let's get you all. It okay. also it also bites my ass almost every time I play it. <laughs> yeah, I'm supposed to, isn't it? Yeah. All right. So again, thin fairway, blind tee shot, which is cool. And absolutely on point for the environment. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons why I decided not to have you play Chavaroon is because I didn't want you to have uh, almost every single tee shot blind or semi-blind. There's a lot of them out there. <laughs> uh, it's roughly every single one of them. <laughs> yeah. This is like, this green side is like, the most uh, manufactured one on the course. And I mean that not in the way of like the difference between like uh, between like a natural course and a uh, manufactured or like Parklandy or uh, whatever you want to call it. Like obviously not uh, as uh, much taken from how the land set. Uh, this green is like someone had a hillside that uh, they would need to put a green into for it to play the way that it would. Mm. And just uh, dug a little bit out of the hillside so that uh, it could accommodate that. And I mean, plenty of courses do that a lot for tees, and I thought it would be a nice little design constraint to have to, like, bring that idea for a green site. Mm-hmm. It, it, and, it gives us some teeth too, this par five. Yeah. I mean, your your ball should be unplayable right now. 
It would be a really hard shot. Yeah. It, well, finding it would be a really hard thing first. <laughs> that was up to your like belt buckle. I think that grass. It's one thing I wish that the game did a better job of is um, if if you, if you've got grass up to your armpits, your lie should be miserable. And like Heather and Gorse, you shouldn't, you should hardly not even be able to move the ball. That could make things interesting for designers putting stuff out there. I'm, mm -hmm. but I get I, people would go over overboard with it too. Yeah. If if you uh, have something really cool like that, there's a very good chance that almost every designer will find a way to make it not work as well as it could. Yeah. Like a lot of the uh, specialty tricks, like the uh, fringe trick, um, plot extension, uh, shit like that. Mm -hmm. It takes a lot of, of like, of just tireless work to make sure that it actually fits and doesn't become like a detriment to the course. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, Q did that on tour. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. tour. Yeah, um, I thought it worked really well there. I have played other yeah. courses where it either was a detriment or it was just kind of it was there. just kind of there. Yeah, it didn't really didn't really do anything. Yeah, it doesn't make a lot of sense to have uh, like extended apron like fringes on a golf course where you fly everything to like three yards short of the pin and just get it to stick with spin. Yeah. Or there's like no break on the greens. It's just, I think the first time person I saw do it was pithy, I think. And there was a little stretch there where people were like, oh, that looks cool. You want to you wanna know one of my uh, favorite things to vent about? What's whenever that? that? Whenever that comes up. What's that? Pithy published Bragg Highlands like less than a week before I published Coos. Oh. And that would have that would have been like one of the really cool things that, that was special and unique for my course. Like, hey, look, I did the fringe trick and I did it well. Nope. Pithy, <laughs> Pithy publishes publishes Bragg about a week or so before uh, my course gets published. Oh, and no. It just steals all the thunder. <laughs> oh. It was unfortunate, but it's still a fantastic course. Yeah, you're you're the journalist that got scooped. I got scooped, man. <laughs> uh, and that's why I was like, it's the first time I saw it. That's why I always say it that way, because I'm never sure if it was the first time it was done. It's the first time I saw it. It was done plenty of times before that. Just, like, Frag Highlands is definitely, like, the one that did it best or did it well first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there was a bit of a period there where a bunch of people did it and kind of because it was the thing to do because it had been done. Mm. And, and it, it didn't last a huge amount of time, though. That little, that fad, yeah. if you want to call it one. Yeah, the, uh, the Nasidia technique with Boreal theme back in 2019, a lot of people tried to incorporate that into the designs and it never worked as well as Nasita because that's that's just like one of those uh, uh, lightning in a bottle courses where mm -hmm. that trick worked so perfectly for that. Nasita's Mayday, isn't it? Yes, it is. Right. It is easily the best uh, 2019 course by my money, and it's probably still my favorite out of all the courses from the game series. It's a shame he's a Packers fan. Uh, it's all the way down. I don't know what NFL team you like the most. I don't think it's come up before. Who, me? Yeah. I'm Bears. You. Makes sense. So, that's why I dislike the pack. Yeah, living in Canada, we don't really have a local team, so... Although Chicago's not that far away from me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, NFL's... Like the only uh, big, uh, big franchise uh, sports league that 
doesn't like have a Canadian team. Not yet, no. Well, not yeah, not and kind of had the Bills for a little while there, but um, I forget how many games they were playing here in in Toronto, two hours down the road for me. That didn't it didn't work though because it wasn't it wasn't Toronto's own team. And they were sharing the Bills. I'm like, no. I don't know that they'll ever have one here. I think they'll go to Mexico first or um, London, England. Yeah, I mean, it's a fall to winter schedule, so mm -hmm. that's just about the worst possible scheduling for Canada because either you have a dome or you're very cold. Yep. Although, I mean, Buffalo's just down the road from here. They do it. Yeah, Buffalo's got an outdoor got an outdoor stadium yeah and they get more I think, I think people in buffalo just like to be cold yeah buffalo gets more snow than toronto does by a long shot um but yeah it, the canadian football league starts in the summer and it's done by november mm -hmm. because of that so this is a four no it's a five, five? okay wasn't yeah okay yeah i mean all of the all of the par fives play pretty similarly to one another. Um, like a a lot of uh, designs on like par threes and par fives uh, tend to have them a lot more distinct. Uh, I figured it would be interesting to like have similar length for everything and like sort of similar ideas and try to make them distinct and try to make them like pop in their own ways okay so like, like when you're all of the all of the uh, ground game plays a lot differently on the par fives get, go ahead sorry, sorry get just off. that's okay um people are here to hear you listen to you not me um given how many courses you've created now how much of design is you trying stuff like that where you're like oh i wonder if i can make the holes play the same length but play differently another way hmm. or is that just plenty some... of it is and a lot of it is not necessarily like uh i've never done this before so it's a really cool idea to have it's like always first and foremost with me it's would this work for the course and the idea that i have okay and i think it works here because there aren't too many uh, uh, Lynx courses, especially Irish Lynx courses, that are just going to be like, here's a three-shot par five. Right. They're, they just aren't built uh, with the idea of, like, length above all else, you know? Yeah. Doesn't mean that there aren't three-shot par fives. It's just, like, the impression I get from... Uh, from the amount of uh, of GCA that I've looked at from the traditional uh, British Isles links courses, I don't see too much length factoring in, uh, at least not to the extent of like we have 600 plus yard par fives almost every week on tour. Right. On the PGA tour. Yeah. Um, I think part of it is links courses to me have always been weather dependent. They, they, yeah. Right. It's if you get it on a calm day, you're gonna tear it apart. Um, St Andrews, great example. A windy week, five under wins it. Five years earlier, it's calm, eighteen under wins it. Yeah. Like um, this course plays so much harder with, uh, with wind. Yeah. And the other thing I think is, I mean, Ireland and Great Britain are are both islands, but they're not they're not very big, um, and they have a lot more people living there than live in Canada, at least. So, and, and in on Britain, Ireland doesn't, but Britain does. So they they just wouldn't have the space to be putting eight thousand yard golf courses all over the place, right? In a way, yeah. And a a lot of their courses are older. There's that too. Yeah. Like the the biggest like golf course boom, uh, in the United States was around 1920s and 1930s. That's mm -hmm. like what you hear when people say golden, golden age. age yeah and even then they were pushing into like seven thousands and such and god god knows that it's only gotten worse because of like later courses like all the all the 
courses down here in the states uh, that are like uh, that are like fifties through eighties and such. Mm-hmm. Those are much much longer and. Once Tiger hit the scene mm-hmm. and uh, made it so that everyone can hit, or everyone on tour is going to hit like 300 yards, uh, some way way further than that. Uh, a lot of a lot of design in the states, or a lot of courses in the states were like retrofitted to play longer. Yeah, that's how you get a course like Wingfoot that in order to keep up with us open standards for like how difficult it should play it needs to play way way longer than it uh, uh, ever would have or it has to have other measures in place like really long rough uh, or just the fact that winged foot was incredibly hard when it was made Mm -hmm. like winged foot and oakmont those were the hardest courses around back then yep and that's not as much the case, uh, like just playing it on a normal like day that a member would play it. Mm-hmm. It's still a really hard course, but oh my god, I... what in the world are these settings? How do you people play this game on mouse and keyboard? Man? <laughs> Yeah, the game has materially changed because technology athletes actually play the game now. Um, I, I remember Oakmont was 94 US Open, I think. Um, and the greens seemed like they were just outrageous. So the yeah, course was difficult. You, you don't now. get the same amount of like retrofitting and such on... Uh on um links courses no they'll, they'll well, move they'll move a t back here and there but that's about it yeah because i mean the wind's always uh, i mean not just the wind like sometimes it's just really cold or mm-hmm. really uh fluctuating the winds but yeah but... british open still plays incredibly hard uh year in year out and it doesn't need like hundreds of yards added for every course or a really tall rough or everything like that and uh karn one of the courses uh, that i had that was an eddie hackett design Mm -hmm. and eddie hackett was uh uh, was around for like the 50s through 80s so like at the same time that like all the new courses that are made in in the states and in the oh come on and in the area around there uh, all those are getting longer. Uh, Karn is still like very naturalistic and very much uh, like it's not meant to be difficult through length. It's meant to be right. difficult through everything else. I also and... yeah. Um, I also think with links, there's not that same preoccupation with the course being difficult. It's basically. Uh huh. The ground's firm. They always want it to be firm. Um, and then it's just a matter of whatever wind you got today is what you got. And if you got an easy day, well, then you shot a good score. And if you got a hard day, then you didn't. Um, they don't seem to have that same preoccupation with keeping a score at a, like keeping a tournament at a certain score. They're just like, well, the, the weather's going to dictate what happens. Mm-hmm. Wish more people were like that. And I, I know, yeah, and I also think it's, I think it's just a different mindset over there too. They don't play stroke play a huge amount. There's a lot of stable yeah. for, there's a lot of foursomes matches. Um, so, whereas over here, it's, it's all stroke play. If, if you yeah. stood on a tee in, in North America and said, hey, let's play stable for, they'd be like, what? Yeah, like public golf, I, I never think public golf should be a numbers game. It should be, it should be a game that you play with the people you're with or as like a pastime for yourself yeah once you get into like tournaments like yeah that'll change because you're specifically playing against other people uh playing different scores but still you're not you're not directly competing against someone you're not hitting a home run off a pitcher right you're uh you're 
up against the elements and the course itself that everyone else plays. Yeah. So I, that's sort of like, I don't necessarily like competition as it stands with golf, not as much. Yeah, I can understand that. I mean, sometimes it gets through with my designs. Like, Orin Moore would probably be fantastic to play with friends as like a match play setting. Yeah. Yeah, it would. Um, I have a couple questions for you as we hit the hour mark here. Mm-hmm. First oh question, just based on what you were just saying, mm-hmm. does, does part, do you think par matters? Hmm. I don't really like to think about like how much under or over par I play, of course, especially not in real life. I like to but think m- more of when each whole de- individual. But more when you're designing the whole does par oh, matter? More design question, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um I get both arguments and I haven't thought about it as much. Um the uh the uh course we just played Orin more, like all the par fives uh, could just as easily be retrofitted into a par four. Like you could bump the tees up 20, 30 yards, or you mm-hmm. could just like, you could just like make a couple tweaks here and there. That would be a par four. Right. Like, how would that be different from a par four? Uh, you could, uh, you could say that hole six is a par three if you play it from the 240 tees because mm-hmm. you're accustomed to certain distances meaning certain pars. Um, I definitely would say, I don't like par necessarily being uh being measured by distance. Okay. Um I don't like the idea of like certain distances uh should always play to certain pars cuz you're going to have plenty of 500 yard par 5s that play fantastic. You're going to have plenty of 500 yard par 4s that play fantastic. Uh, it doesn't matter as much to me like you're you're going to have the same hole just wrapped in a different par. Okay. Um, does it affect things like green size for you or like are you thinking about okay it should take you this many shots to get to the green so here's the shot I'm expecting to come in so then design around that or not so much I mean Orin Moore is not a perfect example of that because there's like two par fours that are more than 450 yards (laughs) in the original publish Um, but the greens are tiny right yeah, I mean it's it sort of fits the course idea. Like I do have some slightly larger greens, like large enough to accommodate certain distances. Uh those are usually tied to distance. Okay. Uh but like hole ten doesn't play drastically different uh uh around the green just because it's a par four uh, instead of a par five. Right. Um so, sort of like one of the things that uh that I get pretty much like the most uh praise for especially from other uh top guys for, uh in designs like when I, whenever I, people talk about my designs with me they'll uh, they'll like to say these greens are really well made and the slopes really fit them mm-hmm. that's that's a distinction I want to make I I don't make slopes to fit greens or fit pins. I make pins to fit slopes. Okay. That makes sense. That, that's something that I think a lot more people should do. Like you don't you don't like have a green site and then uh and then you like have to um figure out when you're uh building out a green site on a real course, where would all of these pins be? Or at least that wouldn't be your first thought. Your first thought would be, how do these slopes make sense? How do, how would this work? Mm-hmm. And par sometimes becomes like something that needs to be thought about there, but those are like not necessarily the uh, edge cases. I'm sorry, I'm very tired right now. So it's okay. I'm sort of talking in circles at times. That's okay. But like, if par is going to be something that you talk about in that sense, then uh, th- then the specific club that you have also should be like uh, if you're gonna if you're gonna have a 450 yard par four, mm-hmm. uh, you're gonna have like a 150 shot in. Mm-hmm. So it wouldn't be like as advantageous if you're trying to make a 
a harder course to just have like a wide open green site there because you're not going to challenge the player on the second shot. Okay. Uh, the other side of the coin, which is probably the more obvious example, uh, if you have like a 520 yard par four, it would not make sense for the green to be 15 yards deep. Yeah. So, so it, there, there is thought about the what type of approach shot normally is coming in then. Yeah, but there's, that's not as much of a debate on par for me. That's more of like, would you be able to hit a four iron to this pin, or would okay. you have to find another way? Would you just go for the center of the green on that? Or would you be able to hit the green period, like in the case of the 15 yard deep mm -hmm. four iron green? Okay. Yeah, the the shortage common. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not to throw Maddie under the bus. But... Oh, he he did it. He did it already, and he drove the he bus did while. It he, himself. Yeah, and he drove the bus while he was at it. Um. All right. I have two questions. I always end it with first one. What is your favorite thing about this course? Uh, I think the uh, quirky ideas that I had were uh, executed well, as well as like they made sense for the idea. So like the obvious example, like six, uh, 240 yard par four, mm -hmm. it, it's still really hard to make those work in the game, mm -hmm. but I would be pretty surprised, uh, to see a better 240 yards, uh, uh, par four. And there w aren't very many, uh, really good holes of that distance, uh, regardless of par. Yeah. So I think, Ideas like that that you don't really expect to work well, I think that worked very well on this course and in most of my courses. Okay, cool. Um, if there's something you could do differently on this course, what would it be? Uh, the cop-out answer is planting. <laughs> okay. Uh, there are a couple of holes that I think I didn't back up enough and say, like, would this work well, like, every single time someone plays it like would someone run through this fairway too much uh if they're just like playing it and uh, not putting as much thought into it like that's something that happens a lot for uh, the harder courses that there's a really hard balance between like uh between like even uh higher cc players or uh, kinetic or elite players uh not necessarily like always hitting a shot and i didn't balance that well and this was a cc course for reminder's sake <laughs> so i could have done a lot better to like make the playability work better for more people okay cool that's something i kind of regret in some cases not yeah. in all cases sometimes i just say you know what this is a plat course screw you guys yeah for sure um, it plays great. I enjoyed it the time I played it in my stream. I enjoyed it again today. Um, thank you so much for being uh, being on here today, uh, John. <laughs> no worries. Appreciate that. Um, guys, if you've enjoyed that, let me know. Like and subscribe. Do all the YouTube, uh, YouTube algorithmy stuff. Um, I have somebody in mind for the next design play, or, sorry, play through with the designer. Uh, we just haven't finalized it, but we had a week break there because I just got busy. Um, hopefully we won't have too many more in the future. Uh, appreciate you guys watching. I will see you guys down the road. Cheers.